Welcome back to the channel everyone. Following last week's video of our second D7 residency visa appointment at the SEF, this is going to be a follow-up video to advise exactly how our appointment went and what you need to know for your appointment. So let's get into it. Little side note, I'm going to be doing this video by myself today. Jen's been to Lagos for a hen do all weekend so feeling a little bit sorry for herself and she's having a morning nap. Not an afternoon one, a morning one. So ultimately you're going to need everything that I mentioned in this video but I'm going to try and structure it in a pattern that makes it easier for you to compile what information you're going to need. So first of all, like we did, we needed to get our residency permit. So you're going to need to go back to our previous video which I'll link here and that involves going to your local camera and getting a residency permit for either a property that you've bought here or a property that you are renting here. So once you've got that, then you need to go and apply for your SNS registration, which is basically similar to what you would have in England for the NHS. The SNS is the Portuguese Medical registration so you'll need to go to your Centro de Saúde which is basically the local doctors and I'm going to link the next video in the series of this D7 visa appointment here now so go and watch that. Pretty simple process you're going to go to your Centro de Saúde with your residency permit and basically you need the number of different documents which is in one of our previous videos and once you've got your SNS registration, then you are good to go for your second appointment because basically everything that you had for your first appointment, whether it be England or wherever else, you're just going to need to retake that to the SEF's second appointment. But having your SNS registration is going to make things a lot easier and it's just going to make the appointment run a lot smoother. So. We have seen online that there's people said that they didn't get asked for the SNS registration, they didn't get asked for the residency permit. This is true, you can get through your appointment without these things. The residency permit to get your SNS registration can actually be quite difficult to acquire. Luckily we got some help from some local friends that we've made out here since we arrived. Having them with the appointment or at the appointment just made it run so much more smooth. So we would advise to get your residency permit so you can get your SNS registration. We mentioned in the SNS registration video that we might have needed to get another copy of the residency permit. This isn't true. You only need your residency permit so that you can get your medical SNS registration documents. So you don't need to get another copy of that. They didn't ask for that at the second appointment. Basically the residency permit is so that you can go and get your SNS medical registration at your Centro de Saúde. Also on that note, what you've got to bear in mind is getting your residency permit and signing up for your SNS registration. If you can do that and you've got the time, that's free. But if you are paying for travel insurance or health insurance through your bank, that's a monthly cost. A friend of ours who lives in Portugal and they pay for private health insurance anyway through their bank because they say that getting an appointment here is like pulling hen's teeth, basically. It's, it's, it's impossible, especially for new foreign foreigners, for example, ourselves coming into the country. It's emergency appointments only. Getting an appointment is very, very difficult and paying private health insurance you reduce the cost of an appointment from about 80 euros down to 20 euros and I think the cost of health insurance she said was around 30 to 40 euros a month depending on obviously medical history and stuff like that so you would have to look into the costs depending on your circumstances but yeah getting signed up for medical the SNS registration is obviously going to be free first thing away and then you don't need to think about potential private health insurance until a later date if you even want to at all. So off the back of what I've just said and moving into our appointment, the lady that t took our appointment basically asked for a citizen number or something of that sort, which in the UK we don't have. So I asked, is that our national insurance number? 
she said, no, this is something different. When I said we, we didn't have something like that, she asked for our medical insurance. So we had medical insurance because she needed that for our first appointment in England. When she asked for that, I said, well, we've got our SNS registration and this is the point when she said, oh, well, if you've got that, give that to me, you know. When I give that over, she used whatever registration we had for SNS. Otherwise, she was going to ask for medical insurance, so we could have potentially been okay handing over our medical insurance. If you were to struggle to get your residency permit and then your SNS registration leading up to your appointment, we've heard that people have got insurance through their bank here in Portugal so that might be a better form of insurance than what we got originally we were insured by Stearsure and it was very cheap I think that could potentially cover the appointment but the private insurance that you get here through your bank I think is linked to the SNS system so to speak and we think that potentially the private healthcare that you get through your bank here is linked to the healthcare so you would be going and getting your appointments at the same sort of medical practices as you would being registered to sns so that's our advice for if you cannot get your sns registration before the second appointment but belt and braces which is what we thought was the best way to go try and get your sns registration and everything sorted before your appointment so them are the extras i've just brushed over what you're going to need for your second appointment so after your first appointment when you arrive here in portugal them are the only things that you're going to need to think about getting extra before your second appointment and they are obviously going to check over your bank statement so they'll be looking at stuff like whether you have got sufficient money coming into your bank. The lady that we actually got for our appointment spoke decent English and that's out here in central Portugal. A lot of appointments are in Lisbon. I think there's an SAF in the Algarve and potentially one in Porto as well but we were lucky enough to get one that's only 20 minutes away from where we're actually living and she was very helpful, very friendly. We had our appointments for 2 and 2.30 I think they planned on they must do them separately even though ours was a joint application as it happened when i went in at two o'clock i was in there for about half an hour mine was done and jokingly i said that i'll sort everything out that jen doesn't need to because she gets nervous about appointments like this and she said that's no problem you can just sort all of hers out and then you can take her citizen card out to sign afterwards that's what I did. So I was in there all in all, probably about 50 minutes. Basically, we had our folder, which we sorted out for the first appointment. She asked us for the documents that she needed as we went. And that was basically a rundown of bank statements, the NIF number. She asked for work qualifications. And she questioned a little bit about what we are doing here work-wise in Portugal so be ready for questions of that sort of nature. As far as the appointment itself we said we would turn up half an hour early but actually when we turned up the office goes on its dinner from one till two o'clock so it wasn't open and, and we were the first people in for our appointments. We were asked by the security guard who comes out to say what the order of the appointments is to fill out a form which I'll show you on the screen now. Got basic information on there. You, you, name, date of birth, national insurance number, email, contact details, mum and dad's name, your mother and father's name. It's got your passport number, basic information basically so they can process your appointment and I think it's to put stuff like that on file. So just to add to the appointment slot which we had, I think we were quite lucky to have the one straight after their dinner times as we've heard that if you turn up during an appointment say you have one middle of the morning you don't tend to get in on time usually so I would advise to go half an hour before at least your appointment and that'll just give you a little bit of leeway and uh, you might as well make sure that you're there on time for when they want you to go in because I think if you are late or whatever and the, the, they'll just send you away and they'll make you book another appointment which is really not something that you want to do. As I mentioned or as as we mentioned on the first D7 appointment video you only need one NIF number for your joint application. The NIF number is basically your fiscal number which you can get taxed through here in Portugal 
and you use it for a number of different things like opening up banks, buying cars for example, we bought a car two or three weeks ago and you need your NIF number to be able to process that. You only need one NIF number for a joint application so you can't get, or Jen can't get for example, her NIF number until she receives her citizen card. So now we'll be able to get her a NIF number, that won't cost us, otherwise we would have had to pay another about $300 to Philippa who we used the first time for my NIF number. Basically you need a registered address here in Portugal, you need somebody who is a citizen here in Portugal to be able to get a NIF number. So we, or my NIF number is registered to her at the moment and Jen will be able to get a NIF number that is registered to here where we are living. So that brushes over the NIF. Apart from that, it's quite a simple appointment. It's a bit of a formality to be honest, be organized, but obviously go in, be pleasant. If you can talk a little bit of Portuguese, it does help as I think it just warms whoever you've got the appointment with up a little bit. She happened to speak very good English, so we spoke English most of the appointment. Yeah, at the end of the at the end of the appointment, they get you to stand up in front of of a camera basically, and they'll take a photograph for your citizen card, and they will take a fingerprint scan. I can't remember whether I think it was both thumbs and then both index fingers. After you've done that, you're good to go. You get a temporary residence card, which I'll show you on screen now. They will ask you to sign both documents, so they've got a copy and you've got a copy to speak, uh, to, to speak, to keep. And then after that, they will organize to send an actual card, your, your real citizen card out to whichever address you've registered on the appointment date and once you've received that you are good for two years you will have after that you've after you've received your citizen card you'll have an expiration date on there and before that date you have to ring up the SEF yourself to to book an appointment to get that renewed they won't approach you to do that you've got to do that beforehand and then you'll get another appointment so We've got our citizen cards now for two years and afterwards they will give you another appointment and I asked what that entailed and that's basically just a check up to show that you are supporting yourself here, that you've got sufficient funds. They're going to be asking just for a general update on your information. Another thing to add would be to say that I did ask if we were to move property which we are likely to as we are looking for somewhere to buy at the moment will you need to change the address and she said yes you'll need to ring and change the information for the address for your citizen card and that was it she said that once you've got your citizen card you are free you are basically an eu citizen you can travel the eu schengen zone as much as you want you haven't got the three month time constraints for example for any, any travellers out there who are wanting to use the D7 for that. And if I was going to say it to anybody who's worried about the appointment, I wouldn't be. If you follow everything that we've said in this video, then you should be fine. It is going to depend, like I said in the last video, on who you get on the day, who could make things a little bit more uncomfortable or somebody somebody's going to make it more straightforward and somebody's going to make it make your life a little bit more difficult but if you've got all the documentation that you need there there's nothing they can do and it's basically it's a case of them doing their job and you bringing the documentation that you need to take on the day so that is about it for the second appointment so with that all being said i'm sure there's things that i've missed so leave any queries that i have in the comments and i'm sure that'll help anybody else who's looking for extra information and i'll get back to you Good luck with your second appointment. Don't be too nervous about it. Just be organised. Everything will be fine. Good luck with your move here to Portugal. Hopefully we'll bump into some of you while we're out here. And yeah, we just broke 4,000 subscribers. So thanks everybody for the support on the channel. We're going to be trying to grow it as the months and years go by. I've got a lot of plans out here. We have just been ticking over. I've been trying to do a little bit of fishing. We've been doing... Lots of walking, looking at the local flu valves and dodging the fires out here. It's been a particularly hot year. Got up to 43 degrees at some point here out in the Serra de Estrella, which is punishable if you're sitting out in it. Luckily, our landlady, who's lovely, Alexandra, 
fitted aircon for us, which is an absolute godsend for us working here in uh, in the house. But yeah, we broke 4,000 subscribers recently, so thanks for the support. Because of that, we now have a super thanks. So if you'd like to help us out, and we've helped you over this this series, that would be much appreciated. Thanks for watching the video. We'll be letting you know what's to come. And yeah, thanks guys. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.